Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank the Dermatology Student Club for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Today, we will learn how to describe a skin lesion. And then we will discuss some of the most commonly used diagnostic and therapeutic procedures in dermatology practice. At the end of the lecture, we will have five minutes for questions. Now, in order to be able to describe a skin lesion, first, we need to learn the language of dermatology. This is a language we share to describe skin lesions, which is also known as morphology. So to describe a lesion correctly, we need to keep in mind seven components. Number one, the distribution pattern of the lesion, the primary lesion, the size of a lesion, its demarcation, color, secondary lesions, and the configuration. We will go through each point in detail. So let's begin with the distribution pattern of the lesion. When we see a patient with a skin condition, first we need to look at the skin as a whole. Is the rash all over the body, therefore we say it is generalized, or is it localized? If it's localized, is it in specific areas? For example, is it affecting the elbows and knees, which are extensor surfaces, such as in plaque psoriasis? Or is it on flexural surfaces, which are the antecubital and popliteal fossas, commonly affected by atopic dermatitis? Or is, it, or is it affecting the body folds, such as the axillary, inframammary, or inguinal folds, such as in this picture of inverse psoriasis affecting the inframammary region? Is it affecting the palms and soles only, such as in plantar, palmoplantar psoriasis, or is it acrofacial, which means it's affecting the face and the hands or feet, for example, in this picture of acrofacial vitiligo? The distribution of a lesion, as we mentioned, can be uh, generalized, localized, or linear. For example, excoriation marks or scratch marks, allergic contact dermatitis secondary to poison IV, sporotrichoid pattern, which is when we have these large, deep lesions or nodules in a roughly linear pattern, such as in this picture of mycobacterial infection. Linear distribution could be dermatomal or affecting the nerve innervation of the skin, such as in herpes zoster or shingles infection. The linear distribution could be secondary to Cobner phenomena, which is when new lesions appear in an area of cutaneous injury in otherwise healthy skin. Or linear distribution could be also secondary or following blaschko lines, which are invisible lines in healthy skin and are believed to trace the migration of embryonic cells in the embryonic life. Some disease processes make these lines visible, such as this picture of, an, of this epidermal nevus. Now let's move on to the morphology or identifying the primary skin lesion. A primary skin lesion is defined as an abnormal skin condition present at birth or acquired over a person's lifetime. So let's discuss the primary skin lesions one by one. Now, a primary skin lesion could be a macule, which is a flat, non-palpable, circumscribed lesion that is less than one centimeter in diameter. An example of a macule is a solar lentigen, which is basically hyperpigmentation secondary to uh, the exposure to sunlight or ultraviolet uh, radiation. Now, when the primary lesion is flat, non-palpable, circumscribed lesion, that is more than one centimeter in diameter, we call it a patch. An example of a patch is this patch of vitiligo. Now, a papule is raised, palpable, circumscribed lesion that is less than one centimeter in diameter. An example of a papule is a cherry hemangioma. When the lesion is raised, palpable, circumscribed, but it's more than one centimeter in diameter, we call it a plaque. An example is this uh, plaque psoriasis in the picture. A nodule is raised, palpable, circumscribed lesion that is usually more than 1.5 centimeters in diameter. It has a larger volume than a papule and it extends to the dermis or subcutaneous tissue. So it is usually better felt than seen. Examples of nodules could be a lipoma or an epidermoid inclusion cyst. 
Now, a vesicle is raised, palpable, circumscribed lesion that is fluid-filled, that is usually less than one centimeter in diameter, and the fluid could be clear or hemorrhagic. Examples of vesicles are seen in herpes simplex infection and herpes zoster or shingle. Now, when the lesion is raised, palpable, circumscribed, and fluid filled, however, is more than one centimeter in diameter, we call it a bulla. Examples of bulla are seen in the uh, fixed drug eruption or bullous pamphigoid. A pustule is raised, palpable, circumscribed lesion that is filled with pus, and it's usually less than one centimeter in diameter. Examples of pustules are seen in acne vulgaris and folliculitis. Now we can also describe the top of a lesion if it has a distinctive appearance. For example, if the top of a lesion is flat and thickened, we call it lichenoid. Or it could be dome-shaped, filiform, pedunculated, smooth, verrucous, or umbilicated, such as the lesions of molluscum contagiosum. Now let's move on to describing the size of a legion, which is also very important. We can see this legion is small or this legion is large. We can also estimate the size of a legion by saying this is few millimeters in diameter or this is few centimeters in diameter. However, if we want to be very accurate, we can carry around a ruler or measuring tape and measure the diameter of a legion, such as this picture, which shows us different uh, uh, diameters of different lesions. The lesions could be a few millimeters or a few centimeters in diameter. Now, the fourth character characteristic of a lesion is its demarcation. A lesion could be either well demarcated, for example, in iris pilas, uh, where if you wanted to, we could easily draw a line between normal skin and diseased skin. Ill-demarcated lesions are lesions where it's hard to see the boundary between normal and abnormal skin, such as in cellulitis. The color of a lesion is also very important. A lesion could be hypopigmented, such as in tinea versicolor. Uh, it could also be hyperpigmented, such as in this picture of cafe au lait, macules, and uh, patches. A lesion could be depigmented, which means that there is absolutely no color in the lesion, or the lesion is chalky white, which is a very characteristic description of vitiligo lesions. A lesion could be erythematous or red, and a lesion could be violaceous, uh, which is a characteristic description of uh, Kaposi sarcoma lesions, such as th these lesions in the spectrum. Now let's move on to secondary lesion, lesions, which are defined as lesions that are caused by the irritation or manipulation of primary skin lesions. Now, secondary lesions could be crust, which is dried serum, pus, or blood on the surface of a primary lesion, commonly seen in impetigo or in secondarily infected hand dermatitis. Scale is the result of thickened stratum corneum. Scale is dry and whitish, as is typically seen in tinea, uh, such as um, in this picture, where we have scale around the edge of the lesion, which we call leading scale. Or uh, scale is also very commonly found in psoriasis lesions, where we see thick silvery scale, which we call micaceous scale. All right. Now, a secondary lesion could also be a fissure, which is a linear cleft, usually seen in dry, thickened skin, for example, in hand dermatitis. And erosion is the loss of part or all of the epidermis, seen in pemphigus vulgaris or pemphigus foliaceus. An ulcer is the loss of the epidermis plus part or all of the dermis. Now, the size, shape, depth, base and borders of an ulcer should be noted. Examples of ulcers are venous or stasis ulcer or ulcers secondary to vasculitis. 
Excoriations are due to exogenous injury to part or all of the epidermis, usually due to scratching. Examples of excoriations are seen in neurotic excoriations. Atrophy is the thinning of the skin. We could have epidermal atrophy, which produces a wrinkly and shiny appearance. An example is lichen sclerosis. Dermal atrophy, for example, secondary to the use of potent steroids, for example, uh, which produces stria. And subcutaneous atrophy or lipoatrophy, such as in lupus paniculitis. Lichenification is the thickening of the epidermis, an accentuation of the natural skin line, usually seen in chronic dermatitis. Now, finally, configuration patterns are different from distribution patterns. A distribution pattern is how the lesions are distributed throughout the body, and they could be generalized, localized, or linear. However, the configuration pattern is how a single lesion are arranged. They could be annular or ring-like, for example, in tinea corporis. They could be numular or discoid, for example, in numular eczema. They could be grouped, such as grouped vesicles seen in herpes simplex infections. They could be target, which is iris-shaped with three concentric colors, such as uh, this picture over here, and this is commonly seen in erythema multiforme. Or it could be serpiginous, which is snake-like. Now let's practice describing some legions. All right, so I'll try describing this legion. I'll follow the seven uh, components or characteristics I discussed. First of all, if I wanted to describe this legion, I would say that on this patient's left elbow, there is, first of all, the distribution is definitely localized. Uh, single, the primary legion, uh, this legion is more than one centimeter di in diameter and it is palpable, so this is a plaque. I would estimate the size, I would say this is a few centimeters in diameter. It is definitely well demarcated. It is red or erythematous in color and it definitely has thick silvery scale. So if I would repeat the description, I'd say that on this patient's left elbow, there is a localized single plaque that is a few centimeters in diameter. It is well demarcated, erythematous with thick silvery scale. And by just listening to the description without even looking at the picture, I would say that this is plaque psoriasis. I'll describe this legion over here. So uh, I would say that this patient has, number one, the distribution is definitely generalized. Uh, the primary legions, I would say, I'm sorry, this picture is not very clear, but I would say that we have both macules and papules, all right? Uh, these macules and papules are coalescing to form large plaques, all right? Uh, the legions are well demarcated because I can clearly see six, six skin versus normal skin. The color is pink to red in color. Uh, so I will repeat the description again. So I would say that this patient has a generalized macules and papules that are coalescing to form large plaques. These are well demarcated, pink, in, pink to red in color. By just listening to the description, I would say that this is the famous maculopapular rash or morbilliform rash. This is a very common rash seen in both pediatrics and adults. In pediatrics, it is most commonly caused by viral exanthems. Meanwhile, in adults, it is most commonly caused by drug reactions, uh, usually by antibiotics. All right, now we will discuss some of the most commonly used diagnostic and therapeutic procedures in dermatology that you will most definitely encounter during your uh, months in dermatology. First of all, we have the potassium hydroxide preparation or KOH preparation. This is a preparation that, that is used when we suspect a fungal infection. For example, if we suspect a, a lesion is tenure or fungal infection, for example, um, fungal infection of the nail, such as the mycomycosis, 
we can scrape some of the scale on the lesion or clip a piece of the nail, add potassium hydroxide, and look at it under the microscope. If we see hyphae, such as in this picture, then it is definitely a fungal infection. Now, a wood lamp is a special type of lamp that emits ultraviolet radiation, which is seen in this picture. It can be used to detect some fungal infections on the skin and pigmentary disorders, such as vitiligo. A culture is used when we suspect a bacterial, fungal, or viral infection of the skin. A swab is taken and is sent for the lab uh, for a culture. Now, cryotherapy is a therapeutic procedure used in clinic for the destruction of unwanted lesions. It uses very cold liquid nitrogen in a gum-like machine, which is sprayed gently on wards, Leishmania lesions, and actinic keratosis to freeze and destroy a lesion, such as seen in this uh, picture. Uh, dermoscopy is the use of a dermatoscope to visualize pigmented lesions. A dermatoscope is basically a magnifying lens with light in it to better examine a pigmented lesion and decide if they look benign or suspicious. If we think a lesion looks suspic suspicious for cancer, or if we want to reach a definitive diagnosis, we can take a biopsy or piece of, a, of the skin and send it to the lab for a definitive diagnosis. The most common type of biopsy done in dermatology clinics is definitely the uh, punch biopsy, which is seen in this picture here. All right, these are my references, and uh, thank you for listening. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you very much, Dr. Nadia. Attendees, if you have any questions, please, you can use the chat. We'll read them. Thank you.